HaKadosh Boker Tov, Mesechet Yivamod of Kavav Amud Alef 26A1. It says in the Mishnah, V'kulam shayu lahem nashim umetu mutarot linase lahem, which means we just spoke about in the previous Mishnah. What do we speak about? We spoke about a Chacham, right? A rabbi that he cannot open up the neder of this woman, and therefore he had to divorce this woman from her husband. Second case was a Shaliach. Right, which is okay. I'm not going in order, obviously. The shaliach, which brings the get medinat yam, or an ed, which is testifying on the death of the husband. In all these cases, we said that they're prohibited to get married to the husband. Okay, why are they prohibited to get married to the husband? Because at the end of the day, right, what's happening is, is that we're going to suspect maybe he divorced them, right? For what reason? For the very simple reason they wanted to get married to her, right? So says the, the Mishnah, right? What happens if they were already married? So if they were already married, right? It says over here, right? Umetu, and now the wives die. They're permitted to come and to get married to them. Why are they permitted to get married to them? For a very simple reason. Because we're not going to suspect that at the time they had a wife while well, they were looking for something else. Now they went and they died. So okay, they died. So now if they're going to come and they're going to get married to this woman, that's going to be okay. Next. What happens right now, another case, right? These women that you testify, whether it's going to be the rabbi that wasn't able to permit it, or the shaliach, or the ed, or whatever it is, all these cases, all of a sudden, right, they give the testimony, and the woman comes, and she gets married to somebody else. Now she gets divorced, or an almana, from somebody else. Again, now it's permitted for them to get married to her. Why? Because it doesn't make sense that they wanted to marry her, right? Let's say it's a chacham. He wants to marry her, right? So he can't find keilu, he can't find, right? He can't find the entrance in order to permit her ned. He divorces her and then she gets married to somebody else. And then only after getting divorced or widowed from somebody as well, we're going to suspect it doesn't make sense. Permitted to get married to her. In all these cases that we just mentioned, it's going to be permitted, right? Whether it's going to be to their children or to their brothers in order to get married to this woman. That was the Mishnah. Says the Gemara. Yeah, it's Mashmar from the Mishnah. Metuim nidgar shulo. What was the first case? The first case was whether it's the rabbi that can't find the, the heter, right? The, per, the permission to open up the door for her. And therefore, because of her neder, she has to get divorced. Whether it's the shaliach, right? That came from the Yinat Yam, And he says, or the witness, which is testifying about the death of the husband, all these cases was shayulaim nashim umetu, and the wives died. What about they got divorced, right? What happens right now in the, all these three cases that the wives did not die? All of a sudden, he divorced the wife, and now he wants to get married to this woman. Do we allow them or not? So says the, the Gemara, metu in itashulo. It's only if these wives died that you're allowed to get married to them. But if they were only divorced from their husbands, right, it's going to be prohibited. So Amale Rav Hillel, the Ravashi, says Rav Hillel to Ravashi, the Atanya, we learned in the Braita, Afilu Nivyashu, right, even Girushin, right? So that means even if they got divorced, it's still going to be permitted. So answers the Gimana, Lakashi, it's not a question. Ha de Avai Ketata, de Lo Havai Ketata. When the Braita says that it's permitted for the husband to get married to this woman, not the husband, whether it's the Chacham, Shaliach, or the Ed, remember, those are always the three cases. When we come and we say that it's going to be permitted to, to get married, right, in this case, right, we already knew that there was already a Girushin coming along. So if, since there was already a Girushin coming along, we're not going to suspect that he got divorced just because of this. Because it doesn't make sense. There was already a Ketata. There was already a fight between them. But the Mishnah, which says they're not allowed to, is where there was no fight between them. So since there was no fight between them, and all of a sudden now he gets divorced from her, so now I'm going to suspect that maybe Bemeti divorced her. Why? In order to come and in order to get married to her. If you want, you could say another answer. Both cases, there was no fights. The Lakashian is still not a question. Ha, the Mishnah, which is prohibiting, the Argilhu, was that he started the fight. He started the divorce. He started everything. So in such a case where he's the one that's starting everything, 
So therefore, I'm going to say the what? That I'm going to suspect that the guy went and he did this entire thing in order to get married to her. Ah, if she's the one that's starting everything, then she's the one that's starting, whether it's the fight or the divorce process. So then I'm not going to say, listen, he went and he couldn't find the heter, or he went and he gave this a get, or he, in order that the wife all of a sudden starts a fight, she picks the fight, and then we're going to suspect that he went and he wanted to get married to this other woman. Okay? Two dots. The kulan shenisu. Okay? All these cases, whether they actually got married to other people, and then they got divorced or widowed, okay? So now you're allowed to get married to them. So says the Gemara, Kasalka Daita, we thought at the beginning that our Mishnah is talking about Mita Amita, the Girushin a Girushin. Meaning like this. What was what was the case? Right? There were three cases. A rabbi that came and permitted that was not able to permit a neder, and therefore they had to divorce the wife. Right? The second case, right? And again, I'm not going in order, but these are just three different cases that we talked about. A second case was, is a person that comes from the diaspora, and he says, which is a get. And third case was, a witness that comes and he says, the husband died. Three different cases. So says the Gemara, I had a Havamina, that when now it says, right, that they got married to somebody else, and then it says they got divorced or widowed, now this rabbi, shaliach, or ed, can get married to the woman now. Right? That's what the Mishnah says. So says the Gemara, I would have had a Havamina that Mita goes on Mita and that Girushin goes on Girushin, which means we said Nit Garshu or Nit Almenu. She got divorced or she got widowed. I thought that the case was an Ed comes and testifies that the husband died. Yeah? So she's not allowed to get married to the Ed. Fine, she got married to Mr. X, somebody else. And then the husband died. Mita, amita. Death with death. That's what I had a Havamina. Then that's the case. So now if the husband died, now she's allowed to get married to the third person. But what does that mean actually? That two husbands died during her lifetime. Correct? And that's what we're going to try to analyze in one second. Uh, very good. So we're going to try to analyze. Okay. And I thought, and I thought that Yirushin goes with Yirushin, which means... The case was that an ed, a witness comes and says, right, which means, right, he comes and he says, which, what does that mean? A witness comes and he says, the get was written in front of me. She got married to Mr. X. And when she got married to Mr. X, now the Mr. X divorces her. So it went divorce on divorce, right? So says the Gimana, I would have thought to say, Mita, amita, that the deen of this woman that she got widowed from the second husband is referring back to the case where the one witness came and testified that the first husband died. And Girushin, the case where the woman got divorced from the second husband, is going back on the case where the first Ed, which means the Shaliach, we're going to call it Shaliach just to make it easier. Shaliach came and said, So then obviously I'm going to say, Name of Matnitim, the Loke Rabbi. That our Mishnah is not like Rebbe. Why? The Ike Rebbe, is going to be like Rebbe. Hamar bitrezimne have a chazaka. According to Shitat Rebbe, in twice it's already a chazaka. What does it mean twice in a chazaka? According to him, once you do something twice, it already is like kavua that it's going to happen a third time. So now, if it happened two deaths or it happened two divorces, so what do you already know it's going to happen? There's going to be another death, a third one. It's just a, a chain reaction, a chemical reaction. So therefore, what he's trying to say is, so then obviously our Mishnah is like Rebbe, because now the Mishnah says she could get married now, whether it's to the Rabbi, uh, whether it's to the Shaliach or to the Ed. Now, one second. But if it was talking about the Ed, she already had two deaths. What's she getting married to the Ed? Uh, to the Ed with? She's an Isha Katlanit. She's going to go, she's going to kill the third one as well. She's a black widow. Yeah? So answers the Gimana, no, you're right. Mita Girushin, we Girushin Amita. We could switch it. The first case was, is that the witness came and said, which is the shaliach of the ed, of the gitin, of get. And then she got married to Mr. X. Mr. X died. So now you are girushin and mita. So now she's allowed to get married to the shaliach. Why? There's no chazakar anything. One husband died and one husband she divorced. 
right? But there's no, it's not a for sure that the next one's going to die, the next one, there was no, there was no chazakah. The same thing on the second case. When the second case was that she went and she had a witness testify that the husband died, and now she gets married to Mr. X, and now Mr. X divorces her. So again, you don't have any chazakah. And therefore, that's why we said that it's mita girushin and girushin al mita. Okay, clear? Fine. Two dots. The kulan mutarot ibneemulachem. All these women are going to be permitted, whether to their children, to the boys, or to their brothers. Okay? So ask the Gemara, Maishna mehaditznan hanitan minayisha asur beimau vevitau veachota. One second. What's the difference between a brayta? There's a brayta. Hanitan minayisha. If a if a man has a rumor that he is going around with a certain woman, so the second that there's a rumor that he's going around with a certain woman, he's going to be prohibited to get married to the woman's mother, to the woman's daughter, or to the woman's sister. Yeah. Why exactly? Because we're going to we're going no not into zika. We're going to suspect that even after getting married, he'll continue doing his avera. Now, if he continues doing with avera, this is now an isu doraita. Because the second that, if, if he comes and he's suspected about Mrs. X, yeah? And now he's going to get married to the mother of Mrs. X. Now what is Mrs. X to him? It's his wife's daughter, right? She, he's not allowed to go with his wife's daughter. So if he continues going with her, now it's an isu doraita. The same thing is with the wife's sister or the wife's uh, daughter. In any of these cases, or the wife's mother, in all these cases, right, you're not allowed to go with them because we suspect that there's going to be infidelity. So the question is, if right now, Hanitana Lisha, if somebody's going to be suspected on a woman, if right now he's going to be prohibited in the mother, daughter, and sister, so now why is it over here by this case, whether it's the Chacham that cannot find the Hetet, or it's going to be the case of the witness, which testifies that the guy died, or the all of a sudden now it's going to be permitted to their sons or, or, to their, or to their brothers. What's going on? So listen to the answers. Nashe legabe nashe shchichan de azlan. Gavre legabe gavre lo shchichan. What does that mean? He says women to visit women, yeah, it is very common. So for, since it's common for women to visit each other, what happens? We're going to suspect that the woman will come to visit. And by the way, when she comes to visit, she gets something extra, right? And therefore, we're going to say it's a problem because now if it's going to be, whether it's the, the sister to the sister, the mother to the daughter, daughter to the mother, whoever it is, women, they visit each other a lot. So the fact that they come and they visit each other a lot, what's going to happen is all of a sudden, he's going to come to have relations with her as well. So he got married to the mother or he got married to the daughter or he got married to the sister. And now the sister comes to visit, the mother comes to the daughter. We're going to suspect that he's still going to do the Avinah with him. Why? They come to visit. It's now even closer, right? It becomes now even, and all of a sudden, he's going to do that with again. And now it's a Doraita. So they're not allowed to. Okay? That's the first answer. Okay? But husband stars, meaning men to men, they don't come to visit. When was the last time a man goes to visit somebody else? Very rare. Right? Why? Because that's much more a thing of the women. So, it's not, it's not common. Right? So therefore, even if it's going to be that she's going to get married to the, to the close uh, kin or whatever it is, it's not that common. Inami, a second answer. Okay. Nashe de lo asran shkivatana adade, lo kapte adade. Gavre de asran shkivatana adade, kapte adade. Right? I'm going to ask you a question. In a case of a woman, right, that she goes with a married man, now she's not married. Does that prohibit the other woman onto her husband? Right? I'm going to give you an example, right? You have Yaakov and Rachel. Yeah, Yaakov and Rachel are married. Now Yaakov is going to come and he's going to have relations, right, with uh, Tzipora, right? I don't want to mention another name because then you're going to start thinking it's sisters and I don't know what. You know, no. Another woman. Does that prohibit Rachel onto her husband? No, no. It has nothing no. to do with it. So therefore, right, they're not going to be makpidot which means a woman sometimes will not be makpida that her husband will go and fool around because it's not going to prohibit her. So therefore she comes and she says, okay, fine. He wants to do whatever he wants, go, right? He doesn't care. doesn't prohibit it to anything to her. So therefore she's not going to be makpida. And if she's not going to be makpida, it's going to be a problem. 
right? That's to do with women to do with women, right? So therefore the same thing. If somebody's going to be suspected of going with Mrs. X, he's not allowed to go with the mother, daughter, or sister, because if he gets married to them, maybe they're not going to be makpitor, because they're going to say, okay, fine, big deal. He'll go with the sister. It's not going to prohibit her. Or if he's going to go to the daughter or with the mother, it's not going to prohibit her. So a woman doesn't prohibit her to her husband. So she doesn't care. But gavre de asran shchivatana adadi. But men, if men go with a married woman, it does prohibit the woman to her husband. So therefore, kapte adadi, so the husbands are makpidim. Meaning a husband will always be makpid on his wife, right? That nobody can live with her. Because if somebody lives with his wife, she'll become prohibited to him. So therefore they are makpidim. So therefore, right, right now, if this guy comes, right? And we're going to call him the shaliyah or the ed, right? The witness. And he's going to get married, right? And let's say, sorry, this woman will get married to her, his son or to his brother, right? The, the son or the brother will be very makpid that this uh, Ed or Shaliach will not have relations with this woman. Why? Because then they're permitted to him. So therefore, he would never let such a thing. To do with the women to each other, the wife doesn't care. Even if they have relations, it doesn't matter, right? So therefore, there's going to be a big difference. So ask the Gemara, Ihachi, if so, so then, Aviv Nami, why did it only say in the Mishnah, that it's to their children, to the sons, or to the brothers. Now, did you realize that the case of Anitam in Aisha, it's written, mother, sister, daughter. So why all of a sudden before did we say that it's going to be only sons and brothers? And we didn't say the father also as well. So also, answers the Gemara, Lomi Bayakama. Well, what does that mean? The Mishnah, it changes words. It said, you didn't even need to mention this. Lomi baya viv, not only by the father that she's permitted to get married. Why? The father, right? The son was the one that permitted, the son was the one that permitted this woman, correct? But now the son is embarrassed of his father and he's afraid of his father. So for sure, he would not come and be mizane with his father's wife. So therefore there, that's for sure that he's allowed to get married to the father. But by the son, right, or the brother, the father doesn't care. I would say that it's going to be prohibited to get married. comes teach you that it's going to be permitted. Okay? Hadran Allah, Ketzad Eshet we're starting the new Perek, Perek Shalishi, the Mishnah. You have four brothers. Reuven, Shimon, Lewi, Yehuda. Four brothers. Two of them, Reuven and Shimon, are married to two achayot, to Rachel and Leah, two brothers, to two sisters. Okay? So now they die. So Reuven and Shimon, they die. Right? They die without children. So now there has to be done. Yibum. So they do halisa and not yibum. Okay? So it says over here, why? Because each one is a chot zekukato, which means if Yehuda would get married to Leah, Leah is a chot zekukato of this one. If Levi would get married to Rachel or Levi would get married, each one is a chot zekukato, which means that each one is has to fall in front of either Yehuda or Levi. So therefore the other sister is called a chot zekukato, which means the Rabbanan cannot do marriage, and therefore they both do chalitza and not yibum. Ve'im kadmu ve'kansu, what happens right now if the brothers went? And they did yibum. So Yudah got married to, to Leah, and Lewi got married to Rachel, Yotziu. They're not allowed to stay married to them, they have to divorce them. Rabbi Yezer, Omer Rabbi Yezer comes and he argues and he says, Bet Shammai, Omer Bet Shammai says, B'diavad yikaymu, which means you can let them, stay them, get them, let them stay married. Betilel is the one that says that they have to leave. Okay, they have to get divorced. Next case. What happens if one of the two sisters, Rachel and Leah, is prohibited, right, to one of the brothers because of an Isur Erva? So for example, right, for example, okay, before Reuven and Shimon die, okay, what happens is, is that Levi takes the daughter of Rachel as a wife. So 
Reuven and Shimon are brothers. They got married to two sisters, Rachel and Leah. Levi, which is the brother of Reuven, got married to his sister-in-law's daughter. Right? Levi's to his sister. Brothers. 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 Exactly. No, 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 no. <coughs> because Bat Rachel, right? Okay, yeah. Why yeah, no, it could be. Um, from a previous, uh, it could no. either be, it could either be from a previous, it could either be from a previous, or it could be. No, um, yeah, no, Rashi says it could be, yes, it could be, it could be the thing, yeah, it could be the, it could be the, it could be the what's it called? It, it, it could also be the, the previous marriage, there's no problem whatsoever. It's also still an event, right? Because if you would now get married to Rachel, that becomes the mother in law, whether it's from a previous marriage or from the, or it's the, ah, yeah, yeah, he will be mother, yeah, right, there. right? Fine, okay. Here, Rashi just says, but it doesn't say if it was from, from a previous marriage or not. Uh, let me just see here. Lakach Levit Bat Rachel Leisha. It doesn't say what, how, what. No! I should, I should throw something. At you. <laughs> Everybody said the same. No, 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 just you. Exactly, yeah. Did you see that? Did you see that? Can Rachel, can Bat Rachel be the daughter of Rachel from the marriage of Reuven? Yes, so. No! Can Bat Rachel be the, the bat of Rachel from the. From Reuven! Look at the picture. Ah, because he didn't have kids. He didn't have kids. It's a boom. <laughs> Obviously, there's no kids. So it's from a previous marriage. Fine. Fine. I see you guys are sleeping. Yes. One more time. One more time. One more time. Reuven and Shimon are brothers. They are married to Rachel and Leah's sisters. Okay? Now, Reuven and Shimon, in this case, they're going to die. And they need to do Yibum. If there's a daughter, there's no Yibum. That means if Rachel had a daughter with Reuven, there's no Yibum. In order to be a boom, there's no children whatsoever. So now, Lewi, before Reuven and Shimon die, Lewi gets married to the daughter of Rachel from another marriage. Okay? So Lewi gets married to the daughter of Rachel from another marriage. Now, if Reuven dies, and now Rachel falls in front of Lewi, what happens? He can't get married. Why? It's his mother-in-law. Because he got married to the daughter of Rachel. Right? He could get married to Leah, but he can't get married to Rachel. Yehuda could get married to both. There's no problem. So says the Gemara, Hayta the Mishnah. Sorry, Hayta Chami in a Sura Laechad be Sura Ba. If one of them is going to be prohibited on one of them because of an Sura Ba, Asur Ba. So he's a Sur to get married to her. So Lewi is not allowed to get married to Rachel to do Yibum to Rachel. Who mutar Ba Chota, but he's allowed to do it to Leah. The Asheni and Yehuda is a Sur Bishtehen. It's going to be prohibited in both women. Why? Because since Either or is not an erva to Yehuda. Both of them are zakuk to him. So therefore, it's a chot zakukato, and they're both prohibited. What was the previous case? The previous case was, you have this case. They're both prohibited to do yibum on either or. Why? If Levi gets married to Rachel, this is a chot zakukato. She is a chot zakukato. If Yehuda gets married to Leah, it's a chot zakukato. Remember, chot zakukato means that the sister is also zakuk. It also has a keshet to him. So you have two women which are sisters that have a kesha to a one human being. You can't do that. So because of that, chalitza and not ibu. This case now, which we just said now there's an erva. Now what happens is as follows. Levi cannot get married to Rachel. So Rachel is not a chod zukukato because he's prohibited with the Yisur erva. So he could only marry Leah. So he could do ibu to Leah. However, though, Yehuda cannot do ibu to either or because Yehuda, if he gets married to Leah, Right? It's a chot zekukato, Rachel. If he gets married to Rachel, it's a chot zekukato, Leah. Okay? That's the Mishnah. Okay? What happens now if it wasn't an Isur Erva? There was an Isur of Mitzvah or Isur of Kedusha. Okay? Which means that one of these women are either Shniot Larayot to Levi. Right? And therefore, it's only an Isur Drabanan. Or there's an Isur Lav but there's no karet. If you remember the gerusha to the point, to the point, to the point, or things like that, all these cases. That means there's, it's an nevera, but there's no, uh, there's no karet. Or it was only in Surah Rabbanan, Shniot Larayot, the secondary Arayot. You remember we had that big, big famous picture of all the different uh, Shniot Larayot, right? It was going to be all the grandmothers and the grand grandchildren and all those things. So now he says, in such a case, right, what happens? So Choletze Velo Mitiabemet. So now Le'ah will do Chalitza and not Yibum. Why? Because since we do Raita, both of them, Rachel and Leah, are permitted to either or. Again, you go back to the general rule. If they're both permitted, Midoraita, 
achot zikukato, which means that if you're going to get married to one, that's the achot, the sister of the other one, which is zakuk for him as well. The same thing if you get married to the other one. So therefore, they do chalitza and they do not do yibum. Next case in the Mishnah, the last case. Hayta achat me'en asura al zeh b'yisur erva, ve'ashniya asura al zeh b'yisur erva. Okay? What happens now if there's both going to be, right? If they're going to be isur erva on both of them, which means like this. Ruven and Shimon are brothers, right, with Levin Yehuda. Ruven and Shimon get married to Rachel and Leah, right, the two sisters. Levi gets married to the daughter of Rachel from a previous marriage. Yehuda mm-hmm. gets married from the daughter of Leah from a previous marriage. So now it comes out that when Ruven and Shimon die, right, what happens, right? Levi cannot get married to Rachel because it's his mother-in-law, but he can get married to Leah. Yehuda cannot get married to Leah because it's his mother-in-law, but he can get married to Rachel. So therefore, the one which is prohibited in this one, Rachel, is permitted in Leah. The one that's permitted, permitted to Leah, it's permitted Rachel. This is what we said, the sister when she's the Yivama, you could do either or, either Chalitza or Yibum. And then with Zerat Hashem, we continue, right? With Zerat Hashem. So Kakadosh, we're continuing now on the Gemara. The Gemara comes and it says like this, Shema Mina, we learn from our Mishnah, Yesh Zika, that there is Zika. You remember what Zika was? That there's going to be a connection between us, a link between us, and meaning what between us, between the Yavam and the Yavama. Why? The E and Zika, because if you're going to tell me now that there's no Zika, Michde, let us see, Hani Mitre Bate Katian. These two Yevamot, Rachel and Leah, are coming from two different houses, from Reuven and Shimon. So they're coming from two different houses. So, Haile Abem Chada, so each one should do Yibum to the other one. The fact that you're saying that they cannot do Yibum and they have to do Chalitza because it's a Chod Zikukato, if you use the terminology Zikukato, that means there means that there is a Zika, that there's going to be a connection between one person and the other person. So the answer is the Gemara, no. Le'olam e'melecha, really, I'm going to tell you, and Zika. There's no Zika. Yishum de Kasavar, but the reason why we said in the Mishnah you're not allowed to do the Yibum, Mishum de Kasavar, but the Tana holds Asur Levatel Mitzvah Tivamir. You're not allowed to be Mivatel the Mitzvah of Yibum. So now what happens? If we're going to permit one of the brothers to do the Yibum to one of the sisters, Dilma Medevia Bem Chad, Maiti Idach. Maybe by the time he does Yibum to one, we're going to suspect that the other one, the other brother, is going to die before Yibum. Or doing chalitza to the sister. And then you're going to do bitul of yibum. Why? Because this asu, the, the, the sister now is prohibited on the other sister because of a chotisha, right? A chotishto. So if so, she's tura from yibum chalitza. So you just announced yibum chalitza. Okay? So now the Gemara continues and asks, if you're going to tell me that this is the case, that you're not allowed to be mvatel the mitzvah vibum, tlatanami. Why did you bring me a case of four brothers? Right? Levi, Ruven, Shimon, Yuda. Bring me a case of even three brothers. And in the case of three brothers, you also have the exact same halacha. You have three brothers. Two of them are married to two sisters. Let's forget about Yuda in this case. Take Yuda out of the picture. I've got three brothers. Ruven, Shimon, Levi. Ruven and Shimon are married to two sisters. And the two of them die. Now both sisters fall in front of Levi. Right here, chalitza velo yibum. Because if you do yibum to one, you're being mevatel the mitzvah of, of chalitza to the other one. So that and it's a sur because of a chot ishto. So according to that, why is the mishnah coming and only give you a case of four sisters, right? Yeah, four brothers, sorry. Right. Even three brothers should be the exact same halacha. So answers the gemara. You're right. Lo mi a kamen. Right? We didn't even mention it. Lo mi lata. Not only in a case of three, that if both of them die. The third one cannot do yibum. The vaday batla mitzvah yibum is for sure. You're going to be batel the mitzvah yibum. But maybe if it's going to be four. Let me tell you, Maybe I'm going to I'm going to say we don't suspect for death. I'm going to say what was the case? The case was I'm not going to say the Levi could do yibum to Rachel and Yehuda to Leah. Why? Because maybe Levi will do yibum to Rachel and then Leah, right? Sorry, Yehuda will die. And then Leah will be free from nothing. So it's just from a Maybe Lamita Lo Cheshmi. 
I'm not going to suspect for mita. I'm not going to suspect for death. So Kamash Malan comes to teach you that even in this case, it's going to be a sur, even in a case of four, because we're going to suspect for death. So says the Gemara, Yihachi, so if we're already going to suspect for death, Hamisha Nami, right? Kavava Mubet, 26B. Yeah? So says the Gemara, Hamisha Nami, what does that mean? Also in a case when you have five brothers and two of them die, right? We should prohibit the Yibum, right? So why did the Gemara say only four brothers? Even five brothers, I'm going to say. So answers the Gemara, you don't say that by five brothers. You know why? If you have five brothers, you do permit Yibum for both of them. Why? Limita de tre lo I'm not going to suspect that two of them are going to drop dead, right? Meaning to one person dying, meaning the case over here, which is Yehuda dying, right? I would suspect to one brother dying, but to two brothers also dying. That's already too much, okay? Fine, next case. Says the Gemara, Amar Rabba Baravuna, says Rabba Baravuna, right? Amar Rabba, in the name of Rab, Shalosh Achayot Yevamot. Three sisters, which are Yevamot. So here you have the case. Five brothers, Reuven, right? Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Shimon. I don't know why it changes the names. Of that. It should have been in order, but whatever it is, right? We have Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, and Yisachar. Okay, you have them all here. Okay, and then what happens? And then what happens is, is that you have, they're married to three sisters. So three brothers to three sisters, right? Until now, we were always talking about two brothers to two sisters. Now we're talking about three brothers to three sisters. Okay, and there's five brothers in total. So that's what it says here. Reuven, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Shimon, five brothers. Fogla, Milka, Vetisa, three sisters. Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, take the three sisters, and they all died, right? Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, they died. Now the wives, which are three sisters, they fall in front of Reuven and Shimon. Okay, so it says, Zecholetz Lachat, Zecholetz Lachat, Gaim Tzayit, Tzicha Chalitza Mishnehem, which means Reuven does Chalitza to Fogla. Shimon does chalitza to tirza. The middle sister does chalitza to both. She gets chalitza from both of the brothers. Okay? Everyone's here? Everyone's with me? Why? 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 comes, Why? comes, and he says as follows. Yeah? He says like this. He says, right? What do we just say? You need to do chalitza from both of them. What's going on? Why? I understood that you could need chalitza, right, from one. Why do you need chalitza from both of them? So, obviously you hold that there is zika. And therefore, since there is zika, the chalitza of one of the brothers does not help from the zika of the second brother. Okay? So it does not help, right, from the chalitza of the other brother, okay? So now he says, so now the chalitza of the middle sister is considered chalitza pesula. So therefore he comes and he says, since the chalitza does not help to take it out, so therefore it's considered a chalitza pesula. The chalitza pesula, right? So therefore chalitza pesula, you need all the brothers, which means like this. What is chalitza pesula? And what exactly are we talking about? There's ibum and chalitza, correct? What is ibum? Right, that the one brother gets married to the sister-in-law. That's Ibum. What's Chalitza? He does Chalitza to her. If right now, what happens if you could not do Ibum? And now he does Chalitza, but you're not allowed to do Ibum. So that's called Chalitza Pesula. Pesula means Grua. Meaning it's not a good one. It's not a good Chalitza. Why? Because Chalitza has to be in a case where you have a choice. You can either do Ibum, you do Chalitza, you chose Chalitza. But if you're not allowed to do Yibum, yeah, no, no. right? No, no. Exactly. That means you're not allowed to do Yibum. Yeah. You have to do Chalitza. Yeah. So that's considered Chalitza Psula, which means Grua. It's a battle, which means it's still Keshera, right? But the, the, the I mean, sorry, Grua. the Keshera is if it's been Yibum. But in a case where you cannot do Yibum, right? So therefore, he comes and he says, in this case, that every single one of the brothers has to do Chalitza to one of the sisters. If one of them wanted to do Yibum, Right to the middle sister, he comes and he says he can't do that. Why? Because it's a chot chalutzato. There's a concept that you're not allowed to do yibum to a chot chalutzato. Here, right, you have three double, sisters, double, uh, three sisters, right? So now you did chalitza to one, he did chalitza to the other one. Now this one, nobody could do yibum to her. Why can nobody do yibum to her? Because it's a chot chalutzato. 
if it's a chol chalitzato, even when they do chalitza to her, it does not help the chalitza. It's a chalitza grua. Therefore, what do you have to do when it's a chalitza grua? All the brothers have to do chalitza. Usually, chalitza is done by one brother. One brother comes, he does chalitza. Yeah, he Here, everybody has to do chalitza because it's considered a chalitza grua, a bad chalitza. But this is only if you hold that there is zika because the zika is connecting them together. Okay. Right? Just like what they asked before. He says, Yehachi, if so, you're going to tell me that the chalitza is psula, so you need to do again chalitza from everybody. So kamai tanami. Also the first two sisters, right, also should need chalitza. Why? Because if you hold that there is zika, you cannot do yibum to any of them because it's a chod zizukukato. So if you cannot do zika to any of them, I think actually the Gemara is even adding on to what John Paul and David asked. Right? John Paul asked one second. If right now Reuven does Ibum and Shimon does Ibum, right? Uh, sorry, they do Chalitza. Reuven does Chalitza and Shimon does Chalitza. So once Reuven does the Chalitza, automatically Shimon is a Chod Chalitza to. So therefore, automatically, right, it's going to be a problem. Right? So therefore, he could... Right? So well, he comes... Problem, no, 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 no. So he comes and he says like this. The question is, is like this. From the beginning, if you hold that there is Zika, yeah? I just realized that the, what John Paul asked was not a question. No, exactly. But one second, one second, one second. Yeah, he says like this, right? Let's explain, right? Reuven and Shimon, can they get married to any of the sisters if you hold the Zika? No. Why? Achot zukukato. Achot zukukato means it doesn't help. So what are they all obligated to do? Chalitza. If you're obligated to do Chalitza and not Ibum, what is that considered? Chalitza grua. So therefore, why did you say that only the third sister has to be done Chalitza by both? You have to do Chalitza by both for every sister. What John Paul was asking is that the second sister should do Chalitza by both. We're not going there. Why? Because a Chot Chalitza to is a Chot for my sister, meaning if Reuven already did Chogla Chalitza, so now Reuven cannot do Chalitza to Milka, right? Because that's a Chot Chalitza to, and he cannot do it to Tirza. But Shimon could. Because it's it's it he didn't do chalitza at all, so Shimon could do chalitza still to tirza. So what John Paul asked was not a question, but this question is: if right now from the beginning you cannot do yibum to none of the wives, none of the three sisters, so therefore it's chalitza grua. If it's chalitza grua, every single case should do two chalitzot, not one chalitza, two chalitzas from the beginning. Then even the first case should do one chalitza. So why did you say that each one does one and only the last sister does by two? Does it make sense? So says the Gemara, one second. It all depends. If they fall to Yibum in one shot, which means that they're all coming to do Chalitza together, hachanami, then you're correct. Right? That each one, then each one needs to do Chalitza to each one. Right then and there. Right? But each one. I mean, every single brother has to do Chalitza to every single sister. Okay? That means Ruven has to do Chalitza to three women, and Shimon has to do Chalitza to Why? Because they fell at the same time, meaning the obligation came at the same time that he came to do Chalitza. In Chalitza, yeah? If they came one after each other, Nafla Chada, so then one of them is going to do one, the Chalitza Reuven, Reuven does Chalitza, Nafla Ida comes the next one, the Chalitza Shimon, Shimon could do Chalitza, because remember, Shimon, it's not a Chot Chalitza, he didn't do Chalitza yet. Okay, so Shimon could still do Chalitza to Tirza, Nafla Ida, now once the third one comes in, now you have a problem. Chalatz lahai. If this, if Reuven's gonna do chalitza, mafka zikato. He was already taking out from the zika. Chalatz If he goes to Shimon, of course, mafka zikato. So you have a problem. So therefore, because of that, that's why the third one is the only one that needs chalitza from both. Right. So Manasa, one if it, if they came one after another, they all come together. Then you're right. In Achanan. So ask the Gemara. Says the Gemara. The Hamar Rav and Zika. One second. One second. One second. This is all in accordance to the Shita that there is zika. Everything that we asked until now, everything was, there is Zika. Now, who's the one that said this? How do we start? Look on the top here. Amar Rabba Baravuna, Amar Rav. Rav is the one that holds en Zika. So if you hold en Zika, in this case here of Reuven and Shimon, why Bennett can Reuven and Shimon not do Yibum? There's no Zika, so there's no Achot Zukukato, so why can't you do it? So says the Gemara, one second, answers the Gemara, Ledivre Omer, yes, Zika, come on. No, he's saying it in the Shita, of the mandamar that there is zika. So for since he's going according to the mandamar that there is zika, 
That's why we said this entire Gemara. Okay? But now Shmuel know. says, Shmuel comes and says, but in a Hanami, if not, the Bebet, each one could do the Yibum or whatever it is, and there's no problem. Shmuel comes now and he argues on Rav. Remember, Rav and Shmuel were contemporaries, and many times they always have Amr of Yom Rav, Amr of Shmuel, Rav and Shmuel. One of them says one thing, one of them says other things. Halacha is like Rav and Sure, Halacha is like Shmuel, Shmuel and, and Dainin and Mamonot. So there's, there was always between themselves, there was always in Halacha different uh, machlokot. So here it says again, Shmuel comes and he says, Echad choletz He says, No. Do you know what happens? These three sisters that you have in front of you here, one brother, could do chalitza to all three sisters. One brother does chalitza to everybody. So says the Gemara, one second. Michti yeah. shamina l'shmuel, one second, we're going to see. Michti shamina l'shmuel, damar chalitza me'al yabayinam. I understand that there's two of shiriot of chalitza. There's two ways of doing chalitza. Chalitza tova v'gruah, correct? Meaning a good chalitza and a bad chalitza. So he says, I understood that I heard that according to Shmuel, you always need a good chalitza. A good chalitza means that you always have the option of doing yibum. Remember, that's a pshat of a good chalitza. A good chalitza means you could, you, you have, have the options. choice. Yeah. You have both options. If you are forced to do chalitza, yeah. that's not a good chalitza. That's a chalitza psula, that's a gruah. It's, a, it's a, not a good one. Okay, so he says, according to Shittat Shmuel, he always needs a chalitza me'alia bainan. He always needs a good chalitza. The Amr Shmuel, because Shmuel comes and he says, Right, as follows, Amar Shmuel, he says, right? Look over here. This is the case. Amar Shmuel, Chalat Lachayot. You have Reuven, Shimon, Levi, that they're brothers. One comes on the top. Right? Reuven, Shimon, Levi are brothers. Okay, Reuven takes Rachel, and Levi takes her sister, Leah. Now, Reuven has another wife, Chana, and Levi has another wife, Esther. So, Reuven, Levi, Right? They come and they get married to two sisters, Rachel and Leah, but each one already had another wife as well. Whether it was previous or afterwards, it doesn't matter. Right? No, no, one second. One second. Right? So now, right? What's the connection to Zika? We didn't get to Zika yet. No, I'm asking, but the Shmuel thing is... No, 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 no wait, one minute, one minute. Now, Reuven and Levi die without children. Okay? Now you have four wives falling in front of one brother. Correct or not? Yeah. Four of the wives. Now, they, these are two sisters and two strangers, right? They fall in front of the brother, Shimon, okay? Now, if right now he did chalitza to the sisters, right? That means Shimon comes and he does chalitza to Rachel and Leah, the tsarot, which are Esther and Chana, are still need to do yibum. Why? Since Shimon could have never done yibum to Rachel and Leah, because they're sisters, so you can't do, they're achayot, they're sisters. So therefore, no, no, all four of them are tzadot. All four of them are tzadot. But if he did, if Shimon did the chalit, the yibum, sorry, if he did the chalitza to Rachel and Leah, the tzarot, which are Hanan and Esther, are still chayavim. Why are they still chayavim? Since Shimon cannot do yibum to Rachel and Leah, but they're two sisters, so therefore the chalitza that he does to them is not a good chalitza. It's chalitza grua, it's not a good one. So therefore, according to Shimuel, since you need a good chalitza, if he did chalitza to Rachel and Leah, Chana and Esther are still obligated. However, though, if he did Chalitza to the Tzarot, to Chana and to Esther, now remember, here you have to do, yeah, before Rachel Leah, he didn't touch Rachel Leah. He did not touch Rachel Leah. He only did Chalitza to Chana and Esther. Now remember, you have to do Chalitza to both because they're coming from two houses, right? It's not that it's one house. If it's one house, if everyone comes, if there's four wives to Ruven, you do Ribum Chalitza to one, the Kaddish. Here are the two houses. So you have to do to two different houses. You have to do one from the house of Ruven and one from the house of Levi. So now here, if he did a chalitza to the tzarot, to both the tzarot, to Hana and, and to Esther, the so them. therefore their chalitza is actually good. good. And therefore the sisters become tzarot from everything. They don't need chalitza, they don't need dibum, they become exempt from everything. That is the shita of Shemuel. Why would okay? the chalitza to the sisters not be, uh, not be good? Because the sisters, since you cannot Boys. do dibum to them, you can do yibum to two sisters. Yeah. So therefore, when you did chalitza to the two sisters, it's not considered a good chalitza. Yeah, it's a chalitza grub, but you can do yibum. You don't have a choice. So according to Shemuel, he holds that you need a good chalitza. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if you don't have a good, this is not a good chalitza, you and can you do yibum. The so therefore, the two other ones, they're still obligated in yibum or chalitza. So if he went to the sisters, the two outer ones are still obligated in chalitza or yibum. If he went to the two outer ones, the two inner ones, which are the sisters, are completely patrued from everything. So says the Gemara, Heicha de kaima, right? When you are going to be the Chalitza of Shimon, 
חליצה כשרה, right? חליץ לראובן, חליצה פסולה. So now, right, what happens is as follows, right? The אחות השנייה, the second sister, is a sur to do ibum to ראובן, because it's אחות חלוצתו. So it comes out that the חליצה is גרועה more than of Shimon, because he's got אזיקה גמורה. So for example here, we're going back to this case, okay? Remember one more time. You had Reuven, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Shimon, three wives. Okay, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, they die. So now it says the Gemara like this, right? When the second sister is not allowed to get married to Reuven because of a Chochel Utzto, Reuven comes and he does a Chalitza, correct? He does Chalitza to Chogla. Now what happens is the next sister, doesn't matter who it is, are always going to be a Sur to him because of a Chochel Utzto, correct? The sister of the one that he just did Chalitza to. So these two become disqualified because of a chol chalutzato. Now, if they become disqualified of chalot of a chot a chalutzato, it comes out that the chalitza of Reuven is garua to take out the zika, right, of Shimon. So therefore, how does Shimuel Shim, Shim, come and say that each one, that one brother comes and he does chalitza to all three sisters? It doesn't make sense. One more time, what did the Gemara say? The Gemara came and said, "Review the uh, come Shmuel." Shmuel argues and he says, "One brother can do chalitza to everybody." He says, "How could that be? If right now Shmuel says that you always have to do a good chalitza, this one brother Reuven, how could he do chalitza to all three? The second he did chalitza to Chogla, can he do chalitza to Mika? No. No. Why not? Because it's, it's a chalitza grua. It's a bad chalitza. Can he do tzitza? No. 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 So one thing. So the question is." How does Shemuel say that one brother, which is Reuven, could do chalitza to all three sisters? It doesn't make sense. Shemuel always holds that you need a good chalitza. Here you don't have a good chalitza. Here you don't have a good chalitza. Why don't you have a good chalitza? The second that you did the first one, it was a good one. But the second that you did the first one, the next two are not good chalitzot because it's a chal chalitza to. So if it's not a good chalitza, so why are you telling me now that one brother could do chalitza to all three? Reuven has to do chalitza to one, Shimon has to do chalitza to one, and then you're going to have the other one in between the two because now it's chalitza to us, so you need both brothers. So what is Shimon talking about exactly? Okay? And then the Gemara is going to answer, you're right. What does it mean one does chalitza to all the, all the sisters? And Sa'id. means that Shmuel doesn't argue on what we said that Reuven does chalitza to Fogla, Shimon does chalitza to Tirza, or vice versa, doesn't matter the order. And now the third, the middle one, the middle one here, we just said Mika, because it's in the middle, whichever, that's the third wife. This third wife, we said in the name of Rav, has to be done chalitza by both Reuven and also Shimon. According to Shemuel, Shemuel, by one of the two brothers. Either Reuven or either Shimon. Right? And the Gemara is going to ask on that, but we continue that on Sunday.